Hello there, everyone. Yeah, sorry about the uh, drought recently of videos. There's been quite a bit going on over here, but now that I've finally got an external hard drive set up again, I can hopefully record in some better quality videos once again and get some going out faster. It's time for the first video of 2015. Yes, yes, it is. This time it is an early access title by the name of Sunless Sea by Fail Better Games. Fail Better have created a previous sort of set of stories that involve their world called Fallen London, and uh, it's quite an interesting world, and this is something you can actually play separately. I would recommend at least taking a look at it, because even if you don't want to play, the lore is very interesting. Fallen London is essentially a world where Earth is somewhat hollow, you could say, and uh, there is a great cavern beneath the surface of the Earth called the Neath, and uh, London has fallen down into it. And uh, you're in the Unteze, or the Z, which is the black sea under the surface of the Earth. And you have to explore it. It's a very interesting world with a lot of strange things going on. It's it, Think of Alice in Wonderland, kind of. How in the worlds of Alice in Wonderland, you're usually talking about things that are very whimsical and uh, kind of silly, along with things that are pretty dark and, and twisted and dismal, and oftentimes those are different sides of the same thing. And Fawn London has that. It is kind of funny at times, very nonsensical and silly, and also quite dark, uh, a little almost Lovecraftian and, um, and kind of mysterious. It's a world that I have become a pretty big fan of because it's just so odd and interesting, and this game is for people who like to read. I'm going to go ahead and say that right now. It's not super action-oriented, although it does have combat and things, but mostly it's about stories, and it's about making a story for yourself. There's a lot of reading, there's a lot of choice, and uh, so if that's your thing, and it, it definitely can be mine, then this is something that's very interesting. So... It just received an update, the Diamond update, as they're calling it, and this update is the last one, the last major update that it's going to have before leaving Early Access. The next one, which is slated for early to mid-February, is called Pearl, and that is going to herald its sort of full arrival. It's no longer going to be in Early Access, it's going to be a, you know, full game. So now that we're in the Diamond state, it is nearly finished, it's not quite done. There's still some placeholder stuff, but it's very nearly there. Now, I've been wanting to cover this for a while because I found it very interesting, and uh, more or less, I've found that I, I wanted to wait because <clears throat> when I was originally going to record it, there was the combat system, which was a bit different. It was a turn-based kind of representative combat system. And uh, in the update called Steel, the... Are, they were going to change it to a more real-time, you know, naval combat system. So I wanted to wait for that. It's here, of course, and they have. So let's just jump in. Now, you can actually uh, download stories right now. Stories are... Uh, think of a combination of events or, you know, world events and quests, basically. Stories are what this game is based off of. Stories are what you will be doing in the world of Fallen London and the sea around it. So, right. So the game technically has permadeath, and uh, that is mostly because, hang on a minute, mm -hmm. some strange recording issues are going on here, anyway, yes, the game has permadeath, sorry about that, but there is a way that you can manually save, and manually saving means um, more or less it removes a certain item from your character that makes you less awesome, but it means that you don't have to start over when you die. It's not the way it's meant to be played, but for the purposes of, of making a video, I wanted to play it that way. So this is a character that is not in the permadeath mode, per se. I do like the choice. That's nice. And uh, the legacy system is actually very interesting, and I want to show it to you at the end of the video by killing off my character. But for now, let's just get into the game. So, welcome to Fallen London. I am docked at the titular city. And I can open up my gazetteer, gazetteer and uh, look at the various stories that are available. So, right now I have 200 echoes, which are... it's money. And uh, I can do various things. I have lodgings, a blind helmsman room, 
and I can sleep there, which helps reduce terror, uh, cost me some money, and can give me some various benefits and things. And there are other stories that I can eventually do. A lot of these involve actually completing the game. I can't really do any of them right now. I'd like to purchase an elegant townhouse, but it's a thousand echoes, which is very expensive. So every time you dock at a place, there will be these various stories that you can uh, click on. You can explore the city itself. In this case, I can go through London, and as you can see, I have various choices for things to do. I can recruit people. These are the people I have recruited on my ship currently. I have a lot of empty space, obviously, including a comatose ferret as a mascot, because why wouldn't you want a comatose ferret as a mascot? I can repair it in the dry dock, I can hire other kinds of crew, which aren't the sort of big characters that go up here. Crew is also a sort of resource, I can hold ten of them. And uh, I can just look around and have various events happen to me, which is interesting. I can also go to some people and trade in some stuff for various things. I know that's very vague, but that's on purpose. The game itself is quite vague. Now, this is something I wanted to show from the very beginning. This is the shop system, and uh, a lot of docks are going to have various kinds of stores that you can visit. But here's something about the stores. A lot of the things you're going to be trading and collecting in this game aren't physical objects. So if I go to my hold, for instance, you can see I have an unstamped crate of brilliant souls, which is a bit strange. I've also got supplies and fuel so I can, you know, live. But these things down here, I have two tales of terror, I have a free evening, I have recent news, and I have a restful night. These are actually things that take up space in your cargo hold, but aren't physical objects. You know, these are, I mean, it's a tale of terror, it's something that I can tell, it's not a, a thing to hold. A lot of these aren't. I have a free evening, and I, I have read the news, so I have recent news to, to tell to someone. So. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of the things you're going to be collecting and finding aren't objects, per se. They are ideas. And that's something that's very interesting about this game. For instance, uh, this is experience, basically, right here. It's called fragments. Every time you discover things, discover new places and do things, you gain fragments. And depending on your, your stat, called pages, which is up here, your stats are called hearts, veils, pages, mirrors, and iron. You also have luck. These are, these are, you know, your stats, like strength, intelligence, and things like that, but they work in a very different way. We'll talk about that a bit later. But the higher your pages stat, kind of like intelligence, it helps with certain skill checks. There are skill checks that will, you know, determine the outcome of certain events at areas, but there are also other usages. For instance, irons, of course, the damage your attacks do. Also, if there's some sort of event where you have to duel someone or fight, Iron is the skill that's going to be checked, most likely, to see if you succeed. But the higher your pages score, the fewer fragments you need to have, and eventually, if you gain enough fragments, you get a secret, and you can talk to your uh, various crew members to actually trade secrets into them to permanently raise your stats. You can also take secrets to that scholar person that you saw on the docks there, and uh, they'll give you money for them and things like that. So, that's another thing. You're that's actually the level and experience system, kind of, and it doesn't actually work on physical objects. Secrets are a legitimate uh, a legitimate form of, of trade, and uh, so are various kinds of tales, Z stories, uh, recent news, glimpses of the surface, things like that. Things that aren't actually uh, real objects you can hold, they actually have value in this world, which is very strange. It's I find it interesting that a lot of the things you're actually going to be using simply aren't actually real things you can touch. And uh, that really goes to the entire universe of this game. If I was to, to just think of a word for the game, just try to describe the game in one word, ephemeral is probably the word that I would choose. It's very strange. It's quite ghostly, and um, it, as you can see here, there's this little ticker. And uh, now I have, basically, the next time I dock at a port, I'll, I'll be able to do something. Every now and then when you're exploring, you'll come across these little events that will give you extra things. Creeping tendrils of fungus, seaweed, unnameable flora, we enter the snares. I found the labyrinth of eels. So, yeah. You're going to be exploring this very mysterious world, trying to, as you can see on this chart here, it's quite huge, trying to make your way around, finding various stations and docking points, finding stories. Stories are 
the main way to actually progress through the game, as it were. And for the most part, you're going to be finding areas and places to interact with in order to actually progress yourself. So I have the basic ship that you start with right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what is that? A bound shark. That seems like something I don't want to attack, honestly. I think for now, lick a monkey crag. I don't know if I want to do that. I've got to be honest, but I did just get a secret. Okay. Holy crap. All right, let's pause for a minute. So you can press space to pause at any point. Let's talk about the combat system. So this is a very basic ship. There are other ships available, but I am broke. And uh, this basic ship is equipped with a basic engine and a single front-facing cannon. As you can see, this red uh, shape here is my firing arc. So anything within it, I can fire at. And these are the skills that I have right now. Obviously, I have no other pieces of equipment like torpedoes, other cannons, consumables. Th that would all go here. I don't have anything like that right now. I do have the deck weapon. And those are its damage... Um, damage characteristics, so damage to the hull, damage to life, which depends on if you're fighting ships or uh, Z-Beasts. Also crew damage, which helps to destroy a crew of a ship to make it less effective, and the amount of time it actually takes in seconds to prepare itself. So what's going to happen is, when I unpause, I'm explaining this while paused because I don't want to die, this little uh, green line is going to fill up around the square, and the fuller it gets, the more likely I am when I fire to actually hit the target. Now, I can fire before it's actually full, but uh, depending on, you know, what, how many weapons you have and the kind of ready time they, they take, you might not want to do that necessarily. Also, this can turn um, red, uh, like a red circle, if it's not in my firing arc. It can also turn yellow, which means that the target I have clicked on is in my uh, sort of firing arc, but not in the lights of the ship, because obviously the untaze is very dark and my ship has lights, which I can turn off to help sneak up on stuff, but when I'm fighting, I want them on, and also to help with terror, because you gain terror by exploring the dark and things like that, and uh, terror can affect all sorts of things. But, uh, so if I go right now, I want to keep this in the green, and shoot him. Boom, hit him. Ow. All right, so this thing might actually kill me, but I decided to just kind of go for it. So... I'm going to slow down a bit, and you have to keep this thing kind of in your sights for ugh, for the cannon to actually ready itself. Oh god. This is not actually good. I'm probably going to die. This thing is far too strong for me, but uh, I'm actually suffering crew damage as well. But I guess this is a chance to show you that legacy system. Cough, cough. Going this far out with, like, just basic uh, equipment and nothing really worthwhile to fire. It's probably not a good idea, but I just kind of wanted to explore and show you. So this is a bit of an eldritch abomination in the case of this world. It's a Z-Beast. There are many various kinds of them, and the newest update, the diamond update, actually adds several of them out. Uh, adds more characteristics to several of them. In this case, this one's actually has better animation. It's using its claws to attack me and things like that. Oh, come on. I might actually be able to beat this thing. I'm not sure if it's worth it, because I'll, like, nearly die. But there we go, and we beat it. All clear. Let's see what happens when we go over its body and see what kind of stories occur. Boop. All right, I can butcher it for supplies and occasionally other oddities. I can also dissect it for knowledge. Now, this is one of those skill checks. So this actually checks my pages skill, and my pages are only 30, which means I have a very low chance of actually getting anything out of this. So I'm not going to do that, although it could give me some very good things if I succeed. But for right now, I'm going to do this. So if I butcher it, nice, I gain one supplies, which every time the uh, hunger of my crew reaches this point, it's going to use one of these supplies to push it back down. I can also use supplies for various trades and things. And also I get 14 and unprepossessing mass. An appalling glob of organic matter and dripping fluids retrieved from somewhere you'd rather not think about. I have no idea what I can do with that, but I'll take it. Ah, this is, let's see, there's probably something horrible inside, but possibly there is not. I can fling it overboard, but 
that's the safe option. Or I can uh, preserve nine of them. Well, let's see what happens. I get two supplies from that. Wow. And it uses them all. All right. So there are various things that could have happened with that. As you can tell, that's what I mean by um, this is a game for people that like to read. Because a lot of the actions, of course, the fighting is action oriented. But a lot of the things that you are doing in between the fighting is not. Uh, you will be very much... Um, Trying to, oh, turning off my light so that stupid shark doesn't kill me. <laughs> You'll be trying to make your way around this world as safely as possible, exploring, trying to unlock new stories, as well as survive. And uh, you're going to have to do a lot of things to survive. You're going to have to fight things, you're going to have to uh, pass or fail skill checks, do various stories, and trade. There are actually various trade goods, and in the case of me right now I have a little bit of money so what I'm going to do is repair my ship I could fight that thing actually I mean I want to fight these uh, the reason I want to fight these is because I can butcher them for more supplies which I need to do and I'm not really at any risk of them killing me so okay there's that done and Gather up the corpses, boom, more supplies. The reason I want supplies is so I can repair my ship in port without spending a lot of money. Uh, you can actually repair your... Actually, I can't repair my hull because it's less than 50%. Well, poop. I'm also almost out of fuel. There is a lot of bad things happening at the beginning of this video. Alright, let's try and get back to Fallen London. I should have enough fuel to make it there, hopefully. This is the kind of thing you're dealing with with this game. You are basically trying to... It's not necessarily a pure survival game, as if you're just trying to survive as best you can. Although that is definitely part of it, you're also trying to uncover mysteries and make a living down here. Now, when you first begin, you choose a previous profession, as well as a possible uh, way to beat the game. Like, what you actually, your aspiration, what your character wants to do. And once you actually reach that aspiration, that's that's what you use to sort of complete a run through this game. Which is interesting. The You actually get to, you know, choose what... Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. I'm right outside the docks, but I'm out of fuel. Well... I can... Let's see, I've got a 50-50 shot of using one supply and getting some fuel. Uh-oh. There we go. Well, that wasn't good, but let's just go. So, uh, yeah, this is a very interesting game, in my opinion. I'm not showing it off very well right now, because I actually saved in not necessarily the best circumstances. But let's dock and kind of show you what happens. So, an inspection. This is not good. I don't have anything to keep them from searching my ship, and I have the crate of souls on my ship, which means I'm probably going to get screwed over here. Oh, okay, it looks like I got lucky. I actually lost suspicion, which is cool. And I guess they didn't find that crate of souls this time, so I was lucky. Let's see. <clears throat> Collect messages, let's see. Uh, I have a free evening, and some various things are happening, so. All right, uh, there's some serious stuff that needs to happen, so. In my hold, I don't really have a lot of stuff available for trade right now. Now, um, officers, as you can see, you can actually click on these officers and speak to them. And uh, various officers can join you as well as you'll start with one through various events. And uh, you can do things with them. In this case, I can actually dine with this person, but I don't have the required... Uh, things to actually make that happen, but I can increase my iron skill because I have a secret. So let's do that. Boop. Sweet. 
I have a wound. Uh oh. It stings, rather. If you have three wounds, you're dead. They'll heal when you rest and from time to time as Z. Ugh. Alright, so it looks like we probably sparred and I got hurt. Let's not do that too much. I don't really have anything to trade, which sucks, although there is a place. Looks like it's not available right now. That can actually trade stories, which is interesting. It doesn't involve money. Yeah, alright, I need fuel, like, real bad, and I need supplies. So, actually, I don't really need supplies right now, but I do need fuel, so let's do that. And now if I go to London and put my ship in dry dock, there are various options for what I can actually do with it. So, with 75 Echoes, I can repair it, but it's not necessarily going to repair it to full. Uh, but I can do this. I can call in some Admiralty favors. It only costs me 25 Echoes, it will repair it to full, and I have to spend Admiralty favor instead, which I have some of. So, boop, I'll do that. There we go. And that's, I wanted to show that because that's an example of trading things that aren't actually physical to get things done. So, more or less, what I'm trying to kind of get across with this video is this game is very interesting and very strange. It doesn't have a lot of analogs. I can't think of very many games that are like it. But I can say for sure that I'm enjoying it a lot. It's basically a lot of this. It's going back and forth. It's exploring. It's trying to get port reports from stations. It's trying to uh, find out the kind of mysteries of the Unterse and see what you can do with the resources you're given. You're trying, you're aspiring to something greater, but actually reaching it is quite difficult. Uh, you can actually, as you oops, may have saw there earlier, I can actually write a song, the Song of the Z, and um, basically that completes the game. There are other ways to do it as well. So, is this worth your money, I guess, is the the main question for a video like this. It's almost done as far as updates go, although I'm sure that once the Pearl update rolls around, they're not just going to abandon it. Uh-oh. But, what I will say is that these people care a lot, a very large amount, about their product. And why do I say that? Well, ow. Uh, let's butcher it for knowledge because I don't need the food right now. So, boop. I get a fragment. You set to work with your knives and acids as an undistinguishable adolescent specimen. A megalops of one of the deep Z crab species, but its eyes, normally vestigial, and these troglodytic beasts are large and rather beautiful. The golden glow is almost gone now, although sparks leap now and then to your knife. You see, it's very colorful in terms of its, uh, its prose. Its writing is fantastic, and um, these these developers, the lovely men and women over at Failbetter, have done a very good job of keeping it updated with new stories, as well as putting their updates out on time and with the content they promised. So pretty much every update, the major ones that are all named after various materials like emerald, pearl, diamond, steel, they they have come out when they said they would, and they have also included the features that they said would be included in the updates. Now. The unfortunate reality of a lot of early access titles has recently been that the developer basically has to choose between getting the update out on time and getting the update out with the features they promised. The guys over at Fail Better have done a great job, in my opinion, of doing both very reliably. So, the thing is, it seems really quite... Uh, quite a good proposition right now to get into if this is your thing. This is a very niche game. A lot of reading, a lot of decision making, not a lot of action. But I'm okay with that personally. And uh, if this is your thing, the writing is superb. If this is the kind of game that you think you could enjoy, the actual universe, the, the world of the Unterse and Fond London and the Neath is extremely interesting. There's a lot to it, actually, in terms of the description of even the most simple creatures, as you may have saw when I fought that Auroral Megalops. There's a significant amount here to like, and I like it a lot. 
so I guess the choice is up to you, but if it were me, I would say that if the kind of narratively driven exploration experience is something that you like, this is actually one of the best out there, in my opinion, in terms of its inventiveness. So to finish off the video, I want to show you the death system, so I'm going to uh, get killed by this Megalops here. Might take a minute, hang on. Hello, Megalops. Would you like to attack me? I bet you would. I'm not sure how much damage this thing will do to me. Hey, poke, poke. Poke, poke, poke. But um, while this is going on, let me just say, there's an awful lot of... That's too slow. Need something bigger. There's an awful lot of stuff to like here. Um, the various gameplay systems are well developed so far. The combat is much improved over how it was. There are actually a lot of items and weapons to collect. There is a lot of gear for your ship to actually uh, trade in and out, which uh, messes with your stats. It also, of course, gives you various abilities to use. There are consumable items, uh, torpedoes as well, these weird candle things. I've I found some bait once that I could use to actually bring up something, which was scary. There's a lot here. I'd have to say that I, I know the game isn't for everyone, although that's a bit of a cop-out to say, because no game is for everyone, but the ideas behind it are so interesting that if the world grabs you, it's really going to grab you. If the world of, of the Neath and Fallen London is something that actually uh, interests you to explore, then you absolutely should. Because it's super interesting. Actually, let's... uh. Just kind of run out of fuel. This is another way to basically use the death system. I'll just like screw myself over horribly here. <coughs> Full power! Go real fast! Spend a lot of fuel, your engines can explode. It's not a good idea. Don't do this, kids. Basically, I'm trying to just hurry up and die to show you the legacy system, but... So, all in all, I'd have to say that the game is worth your time if it's something that you think you'd like. Into darkness. Alright, so here's what happens. You choose a legacy. I don't have any of these various qualities unlocked, unfortunately. These will help your next character be more powerful from the beginning. But, on the Warrant of Redemption, this is what you can choose. You can choose to be one of these things, and this, these are these will affect the stats of your next character. So, if I was Garrick's rival, I will <clears throat> gain 50% of the iron that Garrick had, as well as I can choose one of the weapons my ship had, which is only one weapon, so, you know. You can choose, let's see, mirrors and money... Veils and money, hearts, and one of their officers. Of course, you would want to keep the comatose ferret, though. Or a correspondent, which you can actually keep their, their map of the, the Unterzee. And this all determines what the next character shall be. And basically makes it to where you never have the, the absolute same beginning of the game. And after several playthroughs, you will eventually get better. Uh, you will eventually find more. You find more to to do, and you will keep exploring the Sunless Sea until you come across success. So, that's Sunless Sea, everyone. Maybe not the absolute best way to show it off, but I tried my best. I did what I could. Uh, it's so interesting. The lore really grabs me. And uh, if it's something that interests you, the link is in the description below this video to the Steam page. Keep in mind that it is in early access, technically, but these guys are very trustworthy, in my opinion. The guys and girls at Fail Better have done a fantastic job of updating this game very faithfully and very reliably. And it is in the home stretch to full release. The Pearl update coming in February, which I believe them, is going to add even more content and release the game out of early access and into your homes. So... This is Sunless Sea, folks. Please check it out if it's something that appeals to you as much as it appeals to me. The storytelling is phenomenal. The world is uh, second to none in terms of its uniqueness. It's very interesting. And I hope 
this has been a good enough look at it to interest you. So thanks for watching, everyone, and thanks for bearing with me over the holidays, the uh, holiday drought of videos. I apologize for that once again, but here I am. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.